Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. Guess what? Today is Halloween, October 31st. The night where everyone dresses up in their favorite costumes. Either go out, head door to door to grab some candy or foods or whatever. After you say trick or treat. Or in some cases, celebrate a Halloween party with your friends, family, and guests. You know. Dance the night away with your favorite Halloween tunes, or watch some horror films, and have the best night to remember by, on this ghoulish night. <laughs> yeah, but not this year, due to this dreaded COVID-19 pandemic that needs to die, so we can finally move on with our lives, if, if we have some. So, I'm going to review one last film for this particular month of October. Yeah, there will be more reviews uh, when November follows. But I'm also going to relax and take a break and do whatever I want till then. So now, um, I'm going to review a film that not many people talk about, sadly. It's been criminally underrated. But it had been critically panned upon its release, mostly for this particularly uh, unique idea. Uh, but it came out roughly just before uh, Marvel's The Avengers was coming out. I mean, everyone was preparing for that film. And also because my birthday was coming up too. Yeah, we had to celebrate earlier on the weekend. I had my present, my birthday present, which turned out to be the laptop that I'm using ever since. Yeah, the uh, Dell Esperon N550. And I've been using it for a very long time. That's how I did my reviews. I mean, that's how I've been getting all the files here and there. And, you know, just do whatever I want. Go on the, on the internet. You know, play some games and all this other stuff, too. And that's where I finally set up my YouTube channel after all these years. Yeah, my second YouTube channel that's still up and running. And that's how I post my movie reviews to make my channel more special and better than ever. With commercial breaks and other random videos and stuff. And already I'm, I'm at 925 subs, but I'm probably going to get it even more than that. I'm almost hitting a thousand. Can you believe that? As long as I keep it up, I mean, maybe I'll be lucky. But let's pray for that. <laughs> okay. So the movie I'm about to review for this Halloween night is The Raven. It's a story about a mysterious serial killer that's on the loose, creating several grisly murders from all these victims around as an inspiration to a famous poet and writer and that happens to be Edgar Allan Poe and he teams up with the detective to not only solve the to not only solve the murder mystery behind it but also to track him down as soon as possible and try to save one victim for being the next one on his list And John Cusack portrays the part of Edgar Allan Poe. And it's not to be confused with the 1945 and 1963 versions. It's not even a remake at all. But think of it like it's like any other forensic uh, psychological thrillers that we often see. Like capturing all these serial killers around. I mean, that's the kind of genre we're going for. Even for this horror vibe. So yeah, uh, I've seen ads for the film. I didn't see this in theaters like I was hoping I would. Uh, but I did actually check it out uh, when I saw it two years ago. We rented it at the library. Well, my uncle actually rented it first before I ended up uh, checking it out uh, on DVD. And I wanted to see it for myself. Um, so I, I sort of skipped it though. wasn't so sure if this movie was going to be anything interesting. 
But then I learned that this was from the same director, James Matigue, who's been known for giving us uh, the popular uh, Beef from Vendetta, yeah, with uh, Natalie Portman and Hugo Reaven, yeah, from The Matrix. He's been a long-time assistant director for films like The Matrix Trilogy, for the Raskowskis, uh, Star Wars uh, Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, for George Lucas, and he also did Dark City, you know, for um, he also joined in for Dark City as well. Huh. But of course, he he did films of his own uh, with movies like Ninja Assassin, and then he later went on to do films like Survivor with Pierce Bosnan and with uh, Pierce Bosnan and then uh, then that movie called Breaking In with Gabriel Union oh boy <laughs> but I, I figured I was going to check this one out someday and it felt pretty intriguing for the story and I like how they went for a different idea that's going but I know they they try to make it more as fictional as possible even though they have to have some of the story you know try to maintain what's real what's not hoping this was hoping they got things particularly right or or not but it's a clever idea yeah it has all the features included all on the Blu-ray and I picked up the Blu-ray at Big Lots last year and it does come with a DVD as a combo pack with a digital copy um, yeah the old digital copies where you had to use iTunes to, to add it on your computer or your mobile device yeah which I think this was probably one of the last releases to have you know, before they switched to ultraviolet and then later digital HD on their own <laughs> but let's begin with the movie it stars John Cusack Luke Evans Alice Eve uh, from Star Trek um, Into Darkness she was also in the movie called She's Out of Your League uh, Brendan Gleeson put a lot of several Films. So Oliver Jackson uh, Cohen, Jimmy Yo, Kevin McNally, Sam Hasselden, Pan Ferris, yes, Pan Ferris, who played Miss Trunchbull in the movie Matilda. It was very interesting to see her. Uh, John Wannabe and Brendan Coyle. Yeah, it's written by Ben Livingston and Hannah Shakespeare and it's directed by James Matique. The movie begins in 1849 in 19th century Baltimore, Maryland. The police are on the search for a mysterious serial killer who's creating all these grisly murders from all the victims around in this gruesome, gory deaths. They discover a murder woman that's bald on the floor of her apartment that's locked from the inside and when the killer escapes they found a second corpse as opposed to the other ones in the chimney that was later to be identified by a 12 year old daughter of the first victim that they found uh, therefore they called in detective Emmett Fields who's played by Luke Evans who's called to assist the investigation and discovers that the crime resembles to a short story called The Murders in the Royal Morgue that was written by a famous poet writer Edgar Allan Poe who happens to be played by John Cusack. He was brought in to fields for questioning on how this all this had been taking place here and, and why just after they found the body of Griswold who happens to be the rival pole, played by John Wannabe, who's been cut in half brutally by a pendulum. That's part of the story, the pit and the pendulum. Yeah, where they had to raise the machine and it just swings around and just cuts in half 
all blood spooled out. Yeah. The parrot deduced that someone is staging these murders uh, based upon his stories. Uh, meanwhile, Edgar's love interest, uh, Emily Hamilton, a beautiful woman, played by Alice Eve, who um, has been like seeing him ever since, but unfortunately, her father, uh, Captain Charles Hamilton, who's played by Brendan Gleeson, is very jealous of him, and he doesn't want, and he was refusing, and he doesn't want him to see her most of the time. Of course, um, we learned that Poe is actually into uh, the addiction of alcohol and drug abuse, especially when he was at a local bar, just when he found out one of his uh, uh, ravens, uh, yeah, one of his crows had been uh, murdered, and you can see the inside that was taken out from the pieces. But then, you know, he just decided to have a drink and telling everyone about the last line from, of course, his famous um, poetry, The Raven, you know, Cuff the Raven, Nevermore. That's great. Anyway, uh, during the... Um, anyway, uh, during Charles's um, masquerade ball that was going around, uh, just after uh, Poe was just uh, joining to focus on his uh, particular poetry that he was writing on, and everyone else had to glance in to uh, read their own. Yeah, because he's basically like a teacher here, and also an excellent writer from himself. Um, soon Emily was being kidnapped by the serial killer, which is being described in The Mask of the Red Death, which that's where we saw like a horseman coming by, you know, wearing a mask, assuming that this might be the killer, just as uh, Charles had shot him in the leg. But just as soon as we know it, though, she was taken away, and Emily wants up being inside um, the killer's uh, lair, where this is where we begin to see all the books and all of the, the notes and all the poetry that he had written that leads to all the clues that they had to solve for the detective and the writer. Um, she was being buried alive um, underneath um, the particular ground, which at this rate is sort of like an inspiration to the tall tale heart, in a way. Uh, so yes, the killer continues to taunt Poe in, in all these notes that he written which demands Edgar to write and publish a new story to, to follow around. But then sooner or later, but then soon, all of his lodgings are being burned down by several people who just had discovered and was being exploited by the murders of his own journalistic ends. And that's where he was being forced to move with Fields. Then soon, a clue had revealed being referred to the cask of Amontillado, which leads poles and fields to search through the tunnels under the city with several policemen to see where Emily might be hidden. But the killer eventually pulls a trick on them by finding Emily's corpse, and that turned out to be a guy in the skies, all sealed up, um, and inside uh, the mouth of this victim turned out to be a sailor, it was a clock watch that appears. Then they just uh, continues on their search to find Emily, which turned out to be the Holy Cross Church, and then that's where the serial killer appears and actually kills one of the policemen, who happens to be John Cantrell, played by Oliver Jackson Cohen. And then soon, on the empty grave, they had Emily's name on it to be prepared, which is the cross, which kind of almost leads to a predicament of what's going to happen next. That's where Fields got shot um, in the chest, 
And then next we know Poe had came uh, going after the killer and tries to, to shoot him everywhere it goes, but then suddenly the guns protect but then the bullet just keeps ricocheting around as he pulls the target uh, directly to Poe. But he disappears. And therefore, this is where it continues that leads to the twists and, and turns to find out who the killer really was. And then this is what will lead to the mysterious death of what's going to happen to, to Poe beyond their search of Emily and hoping to save her. Yeah, and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but uh, the film is as intriguing as it could be. It's not a perfect story as well as the, the, the writing is inside here. But I thought it was really um, very amazing that director James McTeague really um, took the, the choice to actually combine this particular familiar story or perhaps the familiar poet and, and make it look more like an actual forensic uh, movie even before you know, forensic uh, serial killer genres that we often get with these psychological thrillers you know, like Seven and The Silence of the Lambs among many others that follows this trait and this works seeing that this is a period piece here um, but I thought John Cusack really portrayed um, Edgar Allan Poe exactly what it was supposed to be. But imagine if he had to, you know, team up with a detective who can actually stop this killer. You know, toying with him, with his mind, and you can pretty much tell that he, you know, he's having these breakdowns. But he always has a great mindset, you know, through the horror stories he wrote. You know, and everything he, he accomplished here, and he really cares for his love. Even though, yes, he's very charismatic, and he's having you know trouble going around. So we learn about you know that he, he once was married to, and he had a wife, but he lost him and lost her, and everything just seems to have not been the same ever since. And I know it kind of leads to the mysterious death um, situation, which might might be true for this particular story, but they never even know the real truth about how this happened. But I know they had to do it in movie terms here. Uh, Luke Evans was great um, as Detective um, Fields, and he's as charismatic as ever, and I thought he would. Yeah, as an inspector, you know, going around trying to f solve some clues, you know, through uh, Poe's stories. But he has to join the help with him, so that way, you know, they'll be able to track him down before he strikes again. You know, part of his list. Um, yeah, uh, great to see uh, Brendan Gleeson, too, uh, playing the part of the father. Um, he's always been great in movies, and Alice Eve is very beautiful as Emily, and rarely so. Uh, kind of remind me of all the other actresses I've seen who played this particular part. Um, really, really was nice to see Pam Ferris again. Uh, I know she's been in other films, but it's it's kind of an interesting take on playing Mrs. Bradley. You sort of, uh, you sort of just. Well, at least she's not the evil type that she played for Mrs. Trumbull, but she plays a character that's more very nice and all, that you care for. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's even some nice scenes here, you know, with the, the recital that Emily had to play, and you know, she plays beautifully, or the masquerade ball was very exquisite right there. Now, as for the the story, yeah, it may have been hollow at times, but I can see what they're trying to do. Um, through the falls, so, through the, yeah, through its flaws, I mean, especially with the plot twist that was happening. When we figure out who it really was. But that's the whole purpose of these films. And the story alone. 
Uh, the, the gruesome death scenes, uh, all these uh, grisly murders that we spotted, yeah, it was pretty well done. You know, they used a lot of visual effects, most of which were CGI, you know, with the CGI blood and everything, and, and the gore and, and the way they, they handle it pretty well. But for the most part, it was sort of like, like how you see in these forensic uh, scenes here of, of, a, of a dead corpse of several victims, you know, blood and and all these grizzly images that you see and that's it's kind of hard to stomach for but they they knew what they were trying to do yeah. and it, it went for this particular blood coloring the um, chili macabre tail and it works so well so I could see what they were trying to do um, but either way, um, not a bad film. Not the greatest movie ever, but it's definitely uh, worth a choice to watch. I mean, even if you want to watch this um, on Halloween or perhaps see it at your own pace, um, it, it's really worth it. Um, I know that uh, Luke Evans, um, now going back to him, I know he was originally written for... Jeremy Renner, or perhaps Ewan McGregor. Yeah, I think they were going to get them, but they were busy. And, and I think once um, Joaquin Phoenix was going to be particularly chosen to play the part of, of Edgar Allan Poe, but yeah, but this was at the time when he was sort of, yeah, well, for a while, like he was going to retire for a little bit until he was going to make a comeback, and which he did with the master. But they got John Cusack to play the part, and I thought he did a great job. It might be. So, it's worth it. So, it had a nice score by Lucas Vidal, which has this chilling uh, violin type uh, blending in with the horns. And some nice cinematography by Danny Woolman. You know, it gives it a dark, spooky, um, cuddling tale here. It, it really works at times. But I, I think it just needed to, to fix some of the flaws that it has in the story and maybe try to patch up a bit. That's just how I felt. So anyway, that's uh, The Raven, the 2012 film, and I give the movie three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and have a happy and safe Halloween at your home. I mean, don't worry, maybe I'll probably have some fun somehow. Um, let's just pray that, you know, we'll be able to live as much as we can, you know, to survive for this madness. I'll see you later. Bye.